1989, the year the Michigan State Spartans bid America aloha from East Lansing. A season that began with close, tough losses turned into another strong finish, a top 20 ranking in the final polls, a fourth bowl trip in five years, and the second bowl victory in the last three years. I'm Terry Braverman, inviting you to join head coach George Perlis and me for a look back at the 1989 Michigan State football season. Game number one, Miami of Ohio. The first play of the year, indicative. It would be a hard-hitting, turnover-forcing MSU team. Coach Perlis had his preseason concerns. Well, when you have to rebuild an offensive line, when you have a new starting quarterback, it's room for some concern. And that's exactly what we had to do. Uh, we didn't talk about it a whole lot before the season because we didn't want to give anybody an excuse or an out. The offensive line did not have a problem blocking against Miami of Ohio for Blake Ezor. The first carry of a great season for number 26, the senior tailback out of Las Vegas. And here is touchdown number one on a great senior season. The Spartans also showed the fans another great tailback in number 30, Highland Hickson. On the very next play, it's Blake Ezor going over for a touchdown, gaping hole by the Spartan offensive line. The Spartans roll up their biggest opening game triumph since 1957. Concerns for the quarterback, Dan Enos, the junior out of Dearborn, his first pass completion to tight end, 11 yards to Dwayne Young. Dan Enos also showed he was going to be a two-way offensive threat in 89. There he goes around the left side, eight yards for his first running touchdown. Another weapon unveiled in 89 was a wide receiver wearing number five out of Flint. His name, Courtney Hawkins. Remember that one. The defense also came to play. This time it's a fumble. It's going to go to the great linebacker number 48 out of Canton, Ohio, Percy Snow. What a year Snow was embarking on. Defensive tackle. Tim Reidinger, number 40, big tackle for a loss. The defense got the shutout in this opening day game. A fumble at the goal line, recovered by Harlan Barnett, tri-captain. Another tailback showed his running promise. Number 21, Scott Seltzer, with a big kickoff return. And the Spartans unveiled yet another tailback, and a freshman out of Kalamazoo named Tico Duckett. He debuted and finished with 99 yards rushing as the Spartans prevailed 49 to nothing on opening day. Game number two on the road, South Bend against the Fighting Irish. They were slightly better than us on that given day. Uh, we knew that we had a chance to play against anyone because we had a strong defense. We had a defense that had a lot of veterans returning. We had a great inside linebacker and felt that with our kicking game and with our defense, we could be in any football game. But the Spartans fell behind early as Ricky Waters takes a pitch from Tony Rice and the Irish lead 7 to nothing. The Spartan defense prevailed on this one. Ricky Waters is going to be hammered on third down by linebacker Dixon Edwards, number 57. But in the second quarter, the Irish find a hole in the Spartan line, almost a slip by the quarterback, the pitch to Ricky Waters, and he's off and running. 53 yards for an Irish touchdown. Turns out to be one of the big plays in the Notre Dame victory. For the Spartans on defense, the next play may have been the hit of the year. Anthony Johnson will take a little swing pass from Tony Rice. Matt Vanderbeek holds him from behind, and Harlan Barnett almost beheads Johnson. The Spartan defense then sets up a field goal. It's Culver taking the pitch here, sweeping left. He's going to be hit by Chris Sunlin. Fumbles the football, recovered by the Spartans' Bobby Wilson. Another defensive gem came on this play as Tony Rice will overthrow Rocket Ismail. It's intercepted by the Spartans' Dan Iaquinello. Returned 16 yards. At halftime, it's Notre Dame 14, Michigan State 6. The Spartan defense keeps up the pressure in the third quarter. Rice is pursued by Percy Snow. Throws a bad pass, intercepted Carlos Jenkins. 
One of the top offensive plays for the Spartans against the Irish was this pass completion. Dan Enos to James Bradley. In the stride, touchdown, Spartans. It was a 30-yard gem. We'll watch it from the end zone replay. As Michigan State in this game racked up 19 first down to the Irish 18. At this point, Spartans trail the Irish by one. Fourth quarter now, Tony Rice with the football, keeping on the option, and he's going to run the football, but before he goes down, Harlan Barnett will strip and steal the ball right away for Michigan State. However, the Irish get the football back, and they mount what proves to be the game-winning touchdown drive. Here's quarterback Rice keeping and getting 12 yards. At the one-yard line, they give it to Anthony Johnson. He plows over from the one. A point after a touchdown makes it 21-13 Irish. The Spartans are not through. Dan Enos looking for his favorite receiver, Courtney Hawkins, over the middle for 21. The Spartans need a first down. It's fourth down and one. Highland Hickson gets the ball, but he's stopped short by Flannery, and the Irish earn a hard-fought 21-13 victory. And it didn't get any easier for MSU as top-ranked Miami of Florida came to Spartan Stadium. They were a national championship team the day we played them. They played as well as they can up front. They've had a lot of great games. They've played it well from a lot of different positions. In that particular game, their defensive line played outstanding football. It looked like a professional football team. Hurricane quarterback Craig Erickson passing over the middle, picked off by Spartans All-American Percy Snow. And Josh Butlin, the punter, ran like an All-American on this fumbled snap and gets Michigan State a first down, 31 yards. And that sets up a John Langlow field goal. Butlin, the punter, also is the holder on field goals. This one is good. And ties the game early at 3-3. Three to three. Gino Toretta, quarterback now, looking for Thomas. He's picked off by the Spartans linebacker, Carlos Jenkins. The Spartans are now mounting a 63-yard offensive drive, and it's capped by this outstanding run by Dan Enos, tiptoeing down the left sideline, 19 yards, and the Spartans lead it 10-3. Toretta, this time looking for Dawkins on the right side. It's a 57-yard drive. This, the key play, a 26-yard gain and first down. It culminates in a five-yard Toretta to Carroll touchdown pass. And at halftime, the Spartan Stadium crowd has a tie ball game at 10 to 10. In the third quarter, Miami strikes quickly. It's Johnson off left guard, 38 yards for the burst, and Miami takes a 17 to 10 lead. Josh Butlin gets a bad snap here, can't get the punt away, and he's going to be blocked, and the Hurricanes have the ball in great field position. Miami gets a field goal out of it, and then they lead 20 to 10. But the Spartans respond. Danny knows at quarterback. Hits Courtney Hawkins long distance, 42 yards. It sets up a field goal, and it's 20 to 13. The Spartans trail by seven. Maybe the big defensive play of the year on this one. Harlan Barnett will pick off Gino Toretta and goes 35 yards. Spartan touchdown. They're right back in the ball game, and the Spartan Stadium crowd senses what could be an upset. The defense of Michigan State continues to battle. Matt Vanderbeek this time will drop Johnson for a seven-yard loss on a screen pass. But Gino Toretta is not through. He scrambles 21-yard pass to Dawkins on the left side. Miami is now looking for that go-ahead field goal. MSU drives for what could be the winning touchdown. Enos hits Bradley, makes a good run after he catches it, 22 yards. That's Courtney Hawkins on the receiving end. Good blocking by the Spartan offensive line. It's good for 15. Fumble, recovered. Dwayne Young, Michigan State. But on fourth down and five, the Spartans have their upset chances go out the window. It's going to be a sack by the Hurricane defense, and Miami, with a late field goal, goes on to win it 26-20. Then the Spartans travel to open up the Big Ten season at Iowa City against the Hawkeyes. Quarterback Dan Enos early sets up a touchdown with a 16-yard pass to Courtney Hawkins. Tailback Blake Ezor was injured, but on this day a star was born named Tico Duckett. Well, we knew Tico uh, had that kind of ability. 
And uh, the, when it really, really helped us is the first short yardage play, fourth and one, when he broke it all the way for a touchdown, some 30 yards. Uh, we saw that burst of speed that we knew he had. We saw him break tackles that we thought he could do from watching him in practice. It showed us that uh, we have someone coming down the line that will be in a position to help us in the few, next few years. Duckett, a redshirt freshman from Kalamazoo Lloyd Norix High School, was to run for 175 yards through the Iowa defense. After a line low field goal made it 10 to nothing, this time it's Bell for the Hawkeyes plunging in, and the score at halftime, 10 to seven Spartans. And a halftime tongue lashing for the Spartans in the pink locker room, and the offense comes out smoking. Great grab here by James Bradley. Then the tight end from Kalamazoo, Dwayne Young gets into the act for 15 yards. But it was to be Tico Duckett's day. He goes over right tackle through a big gaping hole. And a little known fullback from Chicago, Rob Roy, gets into the scoring act. One yard, touchdown, Spartans lead 17 to seven. Now it's fourth quarter. Iowa blocks a John Langlow field goal attempt, and that will set up a 54-yard scoring drive for the Hawkeyes. The quarterback is Rodgers. Looking to Saunders, he's all alone on the left side. Touchdown, 12 yards, and the Hawks are back in the game. They trail 17-14. Spartans are going to eat up some time on the clock. They give it to number 35, and Duckett reverses his field for good yardage. And as the Spartans are trying to run out the clock and preserve the victory, this time disaster strikes as Enos, a little indecisive, is going to be hit fumbles the football and Foster recovers for Iowa. So Michigan State defense has to play hard. First it's Travis Davis with a big sack for minus nine. Then it's Stewart going nine yards but watch the defensive gem by Mike Iaquinello number 44. He will strip the football and get the turnover for Michigan State. The Spartans are going to run out the clock and hold on to the victory right. Well. What's this? Deep in their own territory, the Spartans are throwing the football, and it's caught by Dwayne Young. But then they rule fumble. Iowa has one more chance. Hawkeye coach Hayden Fry talks to his quarterback. We're not going to go for the field goal. We're not going to go for the tie. We're going for the win. But a pass in desperation late in the game falls harmlessly to the turf. The Spartans dodge the bullet. They win 17 to 14. Big Ten victory number one. Then it's back home, the great gridiron rivalry, Michigan, Michigan State. Sunny day, Spartan Stadium, another sellout crowd. A new Sparty greets the fans. Elvis Gerbach, the quarterback for the Wolverines. The last year that Bo Schembechler will coach against the Spartans, it's an interception by Harlan Barnett off a Gerbach pass. Then John Langlow will set up for a 37-yard field goal. It will be blocked by Evans of Michigan and run back by Vaughn. Michigan offense goes to work. Tony Bowles, a tailback, on the draw, runs it up the middle for 21. Leroy Horde at fullback, fourth down and goal. A 13-play, 61-yard drive, and the Wolverines go ahead early, 7-0. At halftime, it's 10-0. Now the third quarter, Gerback is pressured. He's going to be sacked by Travis Davis. The loss is 12, and the Spartan offense goes to work. Courtney Hawkins was to catch eight passes on the day for 89 yards. This one, good for 10. Dan Enos, at quarterback, the junior, maturing with every game. This time will run the option, gets nine big yards against Michigan. Fourth quarter, big play, Michigan State. Fourth down and one, Blake Ezor tries the end zone. He stops short of the goal line in a play that probably gets the Wolverines to Pasadena. The Spartan defense, coached by Norm Parker, continues to play well. However, they get the ball back to the offense, and the offense is frustrated. John Langlow, wide left on a field goal attempt. But then, Harlan Barnett partially blocks a Michigan punt attempt. That helps the Spartans mount a touchdown drive. Quarterback Dan Enos looks for James Bradley on the left side. He's got it for 36 yards. The Spartans were rolling up 16 first downs to the Wolverines 14, and now it's the touchdown, Enos to Hawkins. Scrambling, right side. Touchdown, Michigan State. End zone camera recaptures this exciting play for the Spartan offense, and with the extra point, they trail 10 to seven. 
The Spartans are driving again late in the game. Dan Enos looks to Courtney Hawkins. He's got it for 16. But on fourth and three at midfield, Enos passing to Hawkins is going to be picked off by Lance Dotton, and the clock runs out on the Spartans as they lose by three points, 10 to seven. We had our chances in that game, and I really hate to talk about a close game there. Uh, we missed our fourth and one opportunity on the one yard line. We missed a couple field goals. Uh, we came back at the end of the game and had an untimely penalty uh, holding. So I felt, I felt that our, our team played well enough to win. And because we just didn't cash in on fourth and one, because we didn't kick those field goals, uh, because of a holding penalty, uh, there were so many circumstances there where we could have won that football game. And that one hurt probably more than any game because it was obvious that we played hard and could have won that game. It was nobody's fault but our own. Next up, homecoming, 1989. 76,261 on hand, gray, cloudy day, 41 degrees. And Illinois came out early throwing the football. Quarterback Jeff George will hit Bellamy on a big play early. It's going to be 53 yards for the Illini and set up an early touchdown. A 75-yard drive. Now it's a bootleg on third down and goal. It's going to be Donovan on the receiving end of the George pass. Illini lead it 7-0. Illinois driving again. Fagan, the running back, fumbles the football, tackled by Travis Davis, recovered by Michigan State's Carlos Jenkins. Illini get the football back later in the first quarter. Lester off right end, tackled for a loss by number 25, Benson Donaldson. Lester again stopped for a loss, this time by Matt Vanderbeek, number 66, Carlos Jenkins. Third quarter now, let's go to the action. Courtney Hawkins will electrify a homecoming crowd with a kickoff return of some 85 yards. With the ball on the seven yard line, the Spartans come out on the wishbone and Tico Duckett behind nice blocking by Blake Ezor takes it down to the one. On the very next play, Duckett will squirt over the left side for the Spartan touchdown. And the extra point will tie this game at seven. Here's the replay of the Duckett touchdown from the end zone camera. Fourth quarter action now. The Spartans stage a 16-play drive. Dan Enos, the quarterback, throwing to Courtney Hawkins on the left side for 27. Hawkins was to catch six passes on the day for 101 yards. He knows with good protection from his offensive line. It's time to Hawkins for 18. The Spartans settle for a John Langlow field goal, and they take the lead over the Illini, 10 to 7. The defense then shuts down the Illini. Travis Davis makes the tackle for a loss on third down and seven. Behind the line. So Michigan State takes over, needing just to run out the clock. Highland Hickson, with 1.41 to play, will fumble the football, hit hard by Williams, and number 20, Quinton Parker, recovers. And George engineers a three-play touchdown drive. This is 13 yards to Bell. Then George, who was to have 29 completions on the day, finds Fink over the middle for 13 yards. Then disaster. Touchdown pass. George to Bellamy, Illini win it 14 to 10, a heartbreaking loss for the Spartans. Well, that fumble, that was the emotional play. Uh, I had more compassion for our kids than I did for the game at that particular time. Uh, Highland Hickson fumbling that football uh, really hurt. And the most important thing after a game like that is to make sure that we don't, we lose the game, but we don't lose our team, we don't lose Highland. And I think we did a good job of coming out of that as well as you can under those circumstances. Uh, Highland understood that uh, he had a lot of backing from his coaching staff, from his teammates, and basically from everybody in the community. Next up, a trip to Lafayette, Indiana, ross Aid Stadium, to take on the Boilermakers of Coach Freddie Akers. The Spartans were fired up as they 
come out of the tunnel in their visiting white uniforms, and the defense really came to play early. It's going to be Carlos Jenkins and Dixon Edwards, sandwiching the quarterback that started the game, Lesnowitz, and they knock him out. In fact, knock him out of the game. But that's not the good news. That's the bad news for Michigan State, because a freshman quarterback, Eric Hunter, was to come on. After a scoreless first half, MSU will drive 35 yards in eight plays. His quarterback Enos on a draw on the left side for 11 yards. And Enos keeps the ball in his own hands and scores for the Spartans. Now in the third quarter, Michigan State leads 7 to nothing. The defense now will help Michigan State set up another score. Mike Iaconella will intercept Hunter in the end zone. And on the next play, Enos and Ezor combine for a perfect play-action fake opening up Courtney Hawkins for an 80-yard bomb. The extra point made it 14 to nothing. Here it is again from the sideline, the longest pass play of the Spartan season, Danny Nose to Hawkins for 80 yards. The defense keeps Hunter under control. Carlos Jenkins will sack the quarterback for minus five. On their next possession, it's Enos scrambling before he finds Courtney Hawkins for 18. Dan Enos covers the final nine yards himself. Nice fake by Dan and makes a 21 0 favor Michigan State. Now the fourth quarter. It's another long pass from the Spartan quarterback. This one to James Bradley. 40 yards, a great grab. The next play simply called the catch. A bomb, 35 yards to Courtney Hawkins, who makes a one-handed dandy of the new five. That one, you better look at again. Put that one in the all-time highlight book. This catch by Courtney Hawkins. A couple of plays later, Enos looking to Tico Duckett in the right flat. He's got it. Spartan touchdown. But Purdue will fight back. It's 28-0. Looks like the Spartans have it in hand. But Eric Hunter, the quarterback for Purdue, goes to work. This time he looks for Williams on the left sideline. The Spartans gamble on defense and they lose. He goes 71 yards. Set up Purdue's first touchdown. Touchdown was only three yards, but Hunter had to work at it. He's seemingly in the clutches, but he just gets a little chest pass into the hands of Williams, and that makes it 28 to seven, Michigan State leading. Purdue gets the ball back again. Eric Hunter, the young quarterback. This time he finds O'Connor on the left side for a 20 yard gain. Eric Hunter scrambling now. Finds Dennis in the end zone. Touchdown, Purdue. It's 28 to 14, Michigan State in the lead, but only 244 to play. Not a problem, unless you fumble the football. And that's what happens to Scott Seltzer. And that will set up another Purdue score. Under the quarterback in a wild scramble. Is he hard to tackle? Ask Travis Davis. Travis just kept coming, and Hunter turned a loss into a game. Next play, Hunter again. Pinpoint accuracy, 34 yards to Hoskins. He waits for him to clear, finds his man, touchdown. Purdue, it's 28-21, Michigan State on the lead. MSU just trying to run the clock out, a minute 15 to go, but they have to punt, and a poor snap. Josh Butlin has to run, he loses 14, and Purdue has a chance. Eric Hunter, the quarterback, can win this game, or at least tie it. But his 23-yard pass into the end zone falls incomplete, thankfully, as time runs out. It looked like it was going to be easy when Michigan State led Purdue 28 to nothing, but nothing's ever easy in the Big Ten, is it? No, we're uh, ahead 28 to nothing, uh, almost uh, a little bit confident and ready to relax. Biggest problem we had is we hurt their starting quarterback. Their backup comes in and uh, becomes a star in our game and goes on and has an outstanding season, really fits and starts the foundation of Purdue offense. 
he throws and he throws and he throws. He makes some fantastic throws, but he has the agility, the mobility to run all over the field, and he scared the heck out of us. We were fortunate to come out of that game. We were fortunate he didn't throw one last touchdown to tie up the game. Next up for the Spartans was Indiana at Bloomington. Homecoming for that school, as Coach Perlis checks his watch, he says the offense is ready. 51,567 on hand, a national TV audience watching. 50 degrees at kickoff, the ball goes to Courtney Hawkins at the three, and a brilliant return of 44 yards. The Spartans set the tone scoring early. A 28-yard field goal by John Langlow gives the Spartans the early lead over the Hoosiers, three to nothing. In the second quarter, Blake Ezor makes the longest run from scrimmage of the year with a brilliant individual effort. He reverses his field, cuts back, and goes through and around the Hoosiers for 79 yards. Quite an effort by the senior tailback from Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, it was something that we've worked on very hard that week. We put it in on Thursday, and it's tossed to the left, and if there's people there, reverse your field, make two moves, and go all the way. I'm just <laughs> right. being facetious. Uh, that was natural God-given ability. And it gave Michigan State a lead they were never to relinquish, 10 to 7. And while Blake Ezor was having a great day for the Spartans as a runner, on the next kickoff, Anthony Thompson, the Hoosiers' outstanding tailback, was not. He's going to be hit by the Spartans' top scholar athlete, John Keifel, number 38, fumble the football, and recovered by the Spartan linebacker, Brian Jones. So the Spartan offense gives the ball to tailback Blake Ezor. He somersaults over for the touchdown, and Michigan State now leads it 17 to seven. Snell, the quarterback for Indiana, he will find Thomas for 21 yards, and that will set up a historic run by Indiana's Anthony Thompson. Thompson will get the touchdown, the 60th career touchdown and NCAA record. But Michigan State still will lead it 17 to 13. Michigan State on the attack. It's going to be Dan Enos to Courtney Hawkins for 32. A great block by Dwayne Young helped clear the way. And the Spartans are off and running. Hawkins, four catches on the day for 73 yards. This time it's Enos on a naked reverse. He cruises into the end zone. Six more points for the Spartans. They lead 24 to 13. Third quarter action. A sack on the punter by Dixon Edwards of Michigan State. Blake Ezor almost stopped. Reverses his field again. Picks up 16 more yards. Watch this one again on the replay as Ezor shows why he was one of the outstanding running backs in the nation in 1989. In this game, Ezor was to rush for 203 yards against Bill Mallory's team. A couple of plays later from the end zone, you watch Ezor, he's gonna plunge it in for six more points, Michigan State, 31 to 13. And when Ezor wasn't running the football, he was catching the football against Indiana. This time, a little screen on the right side. He makes it into a big gainer, something like 40 yards. He's our caught three passes, 55 yards against Indiana. The big play man also, Courtney Hawkins. In the end zone, 20-yard strike. Touchdown, Spartans, 38-13. MSU scored on seven straight possessions. Here it is again. Meanwhile, the Spartan defense also playing inspired football. Bobby Wilson is going to sack the quarterback for a loss of 10. Michigan State offense was amassing 535 yards against Indiana. This time it's 23, Enos to James Bradley. Blake Ezor was to get a Memorial Stadium record at that time, four touchdowns, tying a Michigan State record. Here's eight yards, six more points, MSU 45 to 13. It was one of those days for Anthony Thompson. Loses three on this one, but the Spartans are whistled for a face mask. Indiana tries to take advantage. Snell at quarterback, but he's going to be sacked by the Spartans number 62, Cliff Conklin. Fourth quarter action now. This time it's Snell again looking to pass. 
but he's got the wrong receiver in mind. Harlan Barnett, Michigan State, picks it off, and the Cincinnati senior returns it 27 yards. Dan Enos was 12 of 15 on the afternoon passing for 205 yards and two touchdowns. This one good for 32 to James Bradley. Spartan defense, Bill Johnson and Tim Reidinger this time collapse on the Indiana quarterback. Late in the game now is quarterback Dave Schnell throwing a little screen pass to Anthony Thompson, but it's too little and too late. The Spartans go on to beat the Hoosiers 51 to 20. They're now three and two in the Big Ten. And next up, Minnesota at Spartan Stadium with a defense copying MSU's stunt 4-3. A rainy day at Spartan Stadium, but that wasn't the only problem. It was a pain in the neck trying to run against our own defense, trying to do the things that uh, we do well. And it's a credit to them. They saw some things from our film. They picked it up, they put it in, and it helped them. Early in the game, Minnesota attempting a field goal. It's going to be blocked by the Spartan All-American linebacker, number 48, Percy Snow. Defense did a job early against Minnesota. This time it's Schaffner, the quarterback passing. It's picked off by Vincent Donaldson from the Detroit area. Shows he's tough to bring down on that wet, artificial turf at Spartan Stadium. Again, it's the old reliable passing combination. They send Smolinski in motion, and Enos passes to Courtney Hawkins for 13. Now it's Enos on the right side looking for Hawkins. He's got it. Touchdown, Michigan State. The extra point is blocked. The Spartans lead at 6 to nothing. Now in the second quarter, Schaffner is leveled by Vanderbeek, but completes a 20-yard pass. Then makes a great fake and goes down the left sideline and beats the Spartan defense 37 yards. For the touchdown, the extra point, the Gophers have the lead, 7-6. to six. But not for long, here comes Travis Davis pursuing the quarterback, tracking him down for a loss of 15. Schaffner had a long afternoon for the Golden Gophers. This time, he's not only going to be sacked, he's going to fumble the football, and Matt Vanderbeek says, look what I found. Third quarter now, Darrell Thompson running back for Minnesota. He is nailed by number 75, senior from Warren, Ohio. 45-yard field goal attempt, Minnesota blocked again. Same guy, Percy Snow. Fourth quarter action for Minnesota. It's the academic All-American Chris Willerts out of Bay City tracking down the quarterback and coming up with a tackle. Schaffner had a rough afternoon treated by the Michigan State defense. This time, Willerts again snares him for a loss. Michigan State offense goes to work. Dan Enos, right side, James Bradley, 20 yards. Then, Courtney Hawkins finds himself all alone on the left side, and Dan Enos puts it on the money, 47 yards. It's now Michigan State 12, Minnesota 7. Not long after that, it's Enos again completing a bomb to Hawkins, 47 yards. The Spartans can't push it over on fourth and goal from the one yard line as Izor is stopped by stats. But even that one sets up a Michigan State score. Because on the next play, Darrell Thompson trying to run out of his end zone is tackled for a loss by Bobby Wilson. Big defensive play for a safety as the Spartans tack on one more on the offense and they beat the Gophers 21 to seven. And no, that's not Boyne Mountain. It's the upper deck of Spartan Stadium greeting the crowd for the last home game of 89, Northwestern. The Spartans averaged over 72,000 fans in 89. The sun is shining on this pass play to Courtney Hawkins. In fact, it's a Hawkins drive. This on third down and 12 gets the Spartans another big gainer, 24. Hawkins, only a sophomore, became MSU's all-time reception and reception yardage leader in this game. Here's an eight-yarder for a touchdown. Blake Isor gets into the scoring act, and he did it a lot. This one a dandy, 36 yards, his first of the day. And the Spartans now lead the Wildcats with the extra point, 14 to 7. Second quarter action, O'Brien is the quarterback. Dixon Edwards with the sack. The loss was 14. Now O'Brien trying a screen pass to Christian. It's broken up by Harlan Barnett, a stunning hit. Dan Enos at quarterback, rolling left, and then right and through the Wildcats for 39 yards. 
But this was not to be Dan Enos's day as much as it was Blake Ezor. Number 26 just ran over, around, and through the Wildcat defense. This was 18 yards and touchdown number two. The Spartans lead it 21 to seven. Kickoff, Courtney Hawkins returns at 48 yards and the Wildcats lose more on a face mask call. Two plays later, Enos will hand it to Blake Ezor. He dives over for touchdown number three. Spartans lead 28-14. Courtney Hawkins caught eight passes on the afternoon for 135 yards. That one good for 36. Blake Ezor again, following the line, cutting up the middle. Big hole, 22-yard gain. Ezor over the top, touchdown, his fourth of the day. And at halftime, Michigan State leads. 35-14. Third quarter, Ezor for his fifth touchdown. Three yards the hard way. That was a Michigan State record. They now lead 42-14. The defense did play Percy Snow. Had an outstanding afternoon in the snow. Here, he gets an interception. But what Percy really wanted in 1989 was a touchdown. And later on in this quarter, he almost gets it. Here's the pass, picked off by number 48, Canton, Ohio. He's determined to score, and he's caught, dragged down just short. So it gives a chance for Blake Ezor to score a record-setting sixth touchdown. Of course, a Michigan State record, a Big Ten record, and also Ezor, with 36 points, has a Big Ten record in one game. Things to come, how about Tico Duckett, 63 yards, as the Spartans win it 76 to 14, but there was still compassion for the Northwestern program. They're a courageous group of young men. Their coach, Francis Pay, gets as much out of them as anybody, but uh, it was one of the good games for us and a very poor game for them. And the regular season finale, Camp Randall Stadium against Wisconsin. Williams dives into the line for the Badgers. Fumble, recovered by Matt Vanderbeek, Michigan State. Percy Snow will annihilate Wilson on this play for a loss of three yards. And on the next play, it is Cliff Confer forcing a fumble on Henderson of Wisconsin, recovered by the Spartans' Dixon Edwards. Many of the Badger fans had gone deer hunting on this Saturday. Matt Vanderbeek went hunting for the quarterback. Maybe just as well, there weren't a lot of Badger fans on hand to see this. It wasn't pretty. Here's Travis Davis sacking the quarterback, loss of eight. Wisconsin was to net just 19 yards rushing on the day. Also plays like this by the defense, Tim Reidinger. Moving to third quarter action, it's still the same. The defense dominates Matt Vanderbeek and Bill Johnson with a tackle for a loss. Wilson surviving at quarterback, hounded by number 48, Percy Snow for a loss of one. Travis Davis and company, never giving up again putting the clamps on the badger quarterback and percy snow again with a tackle for a loss on this play as coach george perlis liked what he saw in the spartans fifth straight victory yes our defensive line had a good year and probably gelled and played as well uh, that game as any game this whole season as for the offense well they were doing just fine thank you here's tico duckett ripping off a 36 yard gainer but really, the day again belonged to Blake Ezor. He was to rush for 190 yards and three touchdowns. In the fourth quarter, number 26 breaks up the middle. A dandy 58 yards and a score. The Spartans win it 31 to 3. And after the game, they get an offer that they just can't refuse. Gentlemen, would you like to spend Christmas week in paradise? Yeah! The Eagle Aloha Bowl would formally like to invite you to play in Eagle Aloha Bowl 8 on Christmas Day. What do you, what do you say? Yeah. How about you, Doug? Yeah. The trip to Waikiki was special for a group of Spartans who call Hawaii home, including three. All-American fullback Bob Apiza, Dick Kenny, the barefoot kicker, and Charlie Wiedemeyer. Charlie Wiedemeyer, stricken with Lou Gehrig's disease for 13 years, was to be honored at the game as Hawaii Sportsman of the Year. I can't help making a comment about Dick Kenny. I want to know if he 
is still bald. <laughs> The memory of Duffy seems to be very much alive 5,000 miles away from East Lansing. He was a yearly visitor to the islands, uh, besides actively re recruiting some of the Hawaii athletes. Uh, during the off-season, even when he got out of coaching, he was still a frequent visitor to the islands. Uh, he, this was like his second home here, and he holds a special place in all our hearts. Although George Perlis reminded his players that the bowl visit was a business trip, there was also some time to enjoy America's 50th state. The tone of the game is set early as Hawaii quarterback Garrett Gabriel is sacked by Dixon Edwards for a loss of three on Hawaii's first offensive play. The rainbows are stopped as Gabriel's pitch goes awry, is recovered by Matt Vanderbeek. And before lunchtime, the Bows have fumbled seven times with the Spartans recovering four. Dan Enos didn't need to pass often, but he was effective when he did. He finds Highland Hickson for 13 yards. Blake Ezor was the game's MVP and the key offensive weapon of the day for Michigan State. His 10-yard carry was one of 41 attempts on a hot Hawaiian Christmas. And this three-yard sweep gave the Las Vegas senior the first of three touchdowns as he ended a brilliant MSU career. Carlos Jenkins this time picks off one of four MSU interceptions to set up another Spartan score. With Courtney Hawkins double covered, James Bradley was able to break free for four catches. This one, 23 yards, a key play in the drive. The Spartan cheerleaders hang loose. But the drive ends with a two-yard Blake Ezor touchdown run. The Spartans now lead 13 to nothing. And Michigan State's defense again prevails. This time it's a pass intercepted by the Spartans' Mike Iaquinello. And Dan Enos starts a 10-play scoring drive. He keeps it, goes left for 15. Two plays later, the longest pass of the day. 28 yards to James Bradley. Then Courtney Hawkins shows there's more than one way for him to hurt you. He 
takes the reverse, sets up the 31 yards, and maybe scores. Instead, it's a John Langlow field goal, 30 yards. Now Michigan State's lead, 16 to nothing. After the subsequent kickoff, still another Hawaii fumble. This one on a muffed pitch. It's picked up by senior Matt Vanderbeek, one of three recoveries by the Holland senior during the day. After an MSU turnover, Vanderbeek does it again. MacArthur fumbles, Spartans have it. And that sets up another John Langlow field goal, Butlin holding 34 yards, and Michigan State leads at halftime in the Aloha Bowl 19 to nothing. For the Hawaii Rainbows, the first bowl game ever for them did not turn out to be a good experience. Hawaii did get it going in the third quarter. Quarterback Garrett Gabriel hits Roscoe this time for an eight-yard pickup. And a couple of plays later, he again finds Roscoe in the end zone for a Hawaii touchdown. But on the next rainbow possession, the Spartan defense takes over again. First, Bobby Wilson sacks Gabriel for a loss of nine. Then Mike Iaquinello gets his second interception on the day. And that sets up another Spartan scoring drive. The Spartan offensive line controlled the smaller rainbow line. With center Jeff Pearson opening the way, Blake Ezor bursts through on this 24-yard game. That sets up a one-yard touchdown plunge by Highland Hickson. But how appropriate for this nationally televised victory that a 26-yard burst by senior Blake Ezor is the final touchdown of a great Spartan career. It was a spectacular effort. Ezor was to have 19 touchdowns in 1989. And equally appropriate is MSU's final defensive play of the season. An interception by Butkus and Lombardi Award-winning linebacker Percy Snow. As the Spartans win the Aloha Bowl 33-13, their second bowl victory in the last three years. But then it was time to think about 1990, to think about seniors graduating and emerging stars who have been waiting in the wings. Well, in order to have a good program, you need that. You need someone coming in new. You need new blood in college football all the time because you have people graduating. Other schools also have people graduating. We can't see a flaw in our recruiting classes yet, and we hope we never have one. If we can continue to have good recruiting classes, bringing in quality kids, quality players, quality athletes, quality people, uh, we're not going to have any peaks and valleys, and that's our goal, to have a very consistent program, try to stay away from those peaks and valleys.